Welcome to Excel 2010 Statistics video number 8. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, we want to start on the sheet called Cell References. We've talked about formulas a bunch in the class so far, but now we want to talk specifically uh, about cell references. Now, why do we use cell references in formulas? Well, we talked about it earlier. It's awesome. We create a formula to calculate the average. We have some points here. If something changes, we change a formula input, and our formula will update. So let's remind ourselves of that. Now, average. We've seen how to use things like the sum function, count if, and a few others. We even saw how to use average. How do you start any formula? You type an equal sign as the first character. And I know the name of this function, so I'm going to type average. You can select from your drop down, either double click it or tab. This function is expecting a range of values, so I'm simply going to take my selection cursor and highlight the dancing ants are going around the correct range. So before hitting enter, I just want to look. Oh, it's A11 to A33. So whatever values I put there, this function will always look there and calculate the correct answer. Control Enter to put the formula in the cell and keep the cell selected. If I come down here and change this, oh, this person actually got a 1. It was supposed to be 21 instantly that updates. So that's why we use cell references. Now we need to learn there, there's a, a few different types of cell references. In this class we're going to learn about two different types. Now this function right now is looking from A11 to A33. But actually it's not really looking at A11 to A33. It's actually looking one, two, three cells below and then 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So it's looking three cells below where the formula is all the way to 12 so cells below that. The way to think about it is that blue box right there is a relative position in comparison to the formula. That way when we copy the formula over, this blue box will move. Now this is how we uh, hope that they would program this because it makes it easy. We enter the formula in once and then we can copy it over. Now we're going to learn how to copy formulas and with the cell selected with the formula, look at the very bottom right corner. There's a little teeny box. Now if you, this is the selection cursor. If you move your selection cursor closer, 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 it turns to a crosshair. Bill Gates called it a crosshair. I like to call it an angry rabbit. Once you see your angry rabbit, you can click on it, left click, click means left, and drag. Now you, when you drag, right at first it doesn't move, but then you see that gray box and you keep dragging it, you see those two gray boxes, and boom. Now when we put this in edit mode, we can see the blue box moved. When I put it in edit mo mode, the blue box moved. These are called relative cell references. It means in relation to me, the formula, where am I always going to look? It's not always looking at A11 to A33. It's a relative position. I go three cells down, and then the blue box is always going to be the same size. Now watch this. The A, we're in the A column. But when I move over to the B, ah, it moved to B11 to B33. And then here, same thing. Now it moved to the C. Relative cell references. Now that's the first type of cell reference we want to look at. Let's look at another example. Let's calculate our average here again. Equals average, and then enter, enter. So the average is 23.5. Now in this case here, we would like, this is a calculation we'll do in chapter 3. We're going to calculate the deviation. So, so this person got uh, 23, right? And the average was 23.5. So we want to know how far above or below this person is. So we take the x and we minus the average. This is called the deviation. So let's go ahead and do it. Equals, and I'm going to click on one cell to my left, minus F7. And then I'm going to hit Enter. I'm going to do this again. Equals, and I'm going to click on one cell to my left, minus F7. Now notice the E11, when I hit Enter, I'm going to create a new formula, equals, and what does it say? E12. 
So it looks like we probably could copy this formula down. E11 will move to E12, right? Because as the formula goes down across the rows, the relative cell reference, that little blue box, will move. But what about this one? Minus B or F7. Every time we're clicking on the same cell reference. Equals one cell to my left minus F7. Now, if there was a way when we were creating the formula up here to lock part of these two cell references, lock the one on F7, we could copy the formula down. What we did was we created four individual formulas. So let's try this again. Equals one cell to my left, a relative cell reference, minus F7. Let's see what happens when we copy this. I'm going to point, this is my selection cursor. I point to the lower right hand corner when I see that crosshair. That's the angry rabbit click and drag. Now I'm going to click here and hit F2. Now what did this formula do? It actually obeyed us perfectly, right? These are both called relative cell references, and that's the default behavior in Excel. This one up here, it was looking one cell to my left. Here, it's still looking one cell to my left. When we were up here, it was looking one, two, three cells above at the 23.5. But notice, when I'm in this cell, I'm the formula. I'm still looking one, two, three cells above. So we need to do something differently in this cell to that F7 to lock it down. So when we copy it down, it remains locked. So here's how you do it. You type in equal sign, click on the cell. That's a relative cell reference, one to my left, minus F7. And now you got to hit the F4 key. Oh, I hit the F4 key. What does that do? It puts in dollar signs. Those dollar signs are arbitrary. Back in the beginning of spreadsheets, they just picked it. They had to put a symbol in to differentiate a locked cell reference from a relative. Now, the, the word that, that Bill Gates and his pals at Microsoft use, they use the word absolute. This is an absolute cell reference, which means no matter where I copy this formula, it's always locked on F7. I think, uh, yeah, so F, F7 is locked. The blue one has no dollar sign, so it's not locked. Let's try this. Control Enter. And now I'm going to point to my fill handle. When I see my angry rabbit, I'm going to click and drag. Click in the last cell at the bottom to check and verify if your formula is correct. Hit F2, put it in edit mode. Wow, the blue box moved relatively throughout the copy action. And the absolute cell reference remained locked on F7 throughout the copy action. So when you're copying formulas, that's when you need to worry about whether you have a relative or an absolute. Let's look at another example. Here uh, is a small table. Uh, this will be called a frequency table. Uh, we have some text, which later will be called qualitative data, right? It's a bunch of text. These are all the, the autos we sold, a Honda, a Toyota, Honda, Toyota, Ford. But over here, we have an individual listing of each one, a unique list. Um, elements in the textbooks. Ford. We want a formula here that will look through this whole list and count how many Fords. All right, so let's try the count if function. We saw this a couple videos ago, equals count if. Count if is great because it can look through a range of values. You give it some criteria, and it'll count. So I'm going to highlight this range. I'm going to click here, and we're going to use our keyboard shortcut, Control Shift Down Arrow. Now, I'm going to scroll up here. Think about this. When we copy this formula down, what do we need to do? Every single time as we copy down, it needs to be locked on this range. If we didn't, this blue box would move down one each time, and it would get the incorrect answer. So with my cursor still touching, same as when we did it up here, this is a range. When we did it up here, it was a single cell. I'm going to hit the F4 key. Oh, huh? that's kind of cool. It puts the dollar signs in front of both the beginning cell for the range and the ending cell. That's our range. Comma and our criteria. 
one cell to my left. Isn't that cool? That means as we copy the formula down, that little Dancing Ants green box will move to Toyota and get the correct count here, then move to Honda and get the correct count here. Close parentheses, control enter. Now, we have been pointing our angry rabbit or our cursor when we see our angry rabbit, we click and drag. However, there's a faster way to copy a formula down a column if you have stuff to the left. You simply double click. Double click. Let me do that again. Control Z is undo. Point there, and when I see my angry rabbit, double click. Now let's click in the last cell and hit F2. Absolutely awesome. This remained locked. These are absolute cell references. Throughout the copy action, they remained locked. And this one is relative. Uh, so that or we saw a couple examples. Absolute relative, locked, not locked. Absolute relative, not locked, locked. And of course, we saw what happens. Relative cell references are totally beautiful when you have a column full of averages or sums or whatever. All right, so cell references. Uh, coming up next video, we just have a little short last video about uh, proportions, probability, and percents. See you next video.